let's take a look at our top selections. Dan Ullman, Mike Beer, the Muniz Memorial Classic is race number 12 at the fairgrounds on Louisiana Derby Saturday. Let's take a peek at this field because there is a very interesting horse in here. The number five Colonel Liam sort of burst onto the national scene with his victory in the Pegasus World Cup turf. He might be right now one of the better turf horses in the country, but every race is sort of a test for Colonel Liam. He's so lightly raced. He's still a little bit uh, unexposed. That's that, that's all true, Dan. Um, so far, you know, at least up to this point, anyway, he looks like he could be, um, you know, one of the better turf horses in the country if he isn't one of those already. And I still really feel like when you watch him run, we don't have any idea how good this horse is yet. I mean, he's three for four on turf right now, but he probably should be undefeated on turf right now. The only time he lost, um, he had a huge excuse um, at Saratoga last summer. He's going to have to do some running on Saturday, however, because as we take a look at the time form U.S. pace projector, he's going to face a field that will likely be led in the early stages by last year's Muniz winner, the number one factor this, who just had a sensational 2025 of nine, a 110 buyer speed figure, a horse that handles firm turf and yielding turf, and a horse in his seasonal debut ran, I think, a lot better than it looks on paper. He was fifth as the favorite behind a couple of these but he did a lot of work on the lead and he might not have to go as fast early this time around. Oh, yeah, that pace projector um, sort of points to factor this as being a major player in this race, Dan, because um, as you've already sort of alluded to, that last race off the bench, um, boy, did he take the worst of it and they're just hooked up on the pace right from the start. I mean, he was still there sort of grimly holding on down to about the 16th pole before he finally let it go. He actually ran very well last time. 30 to 1 on the morning line for the 2, 91 assault. A horse coming from mid pack on your pace projector. He loves the fairgrounds. 7 of 11 here. It's his second start of the year. But to me, he's more of a Louisiana bred stakes horse, and he's taking on a tough field of graded runners. Yeah, right. This is his turf course. He really likes it down here. The question is um, can he go with the better horses in this kind of a race? And he, has, he still has to prove that. He'll be a big price if you think he can captivating moon is going to be coming from the back of the pack as he did last time out in the grade three fairgrounds when he won it at 43 to one over three of these including factor this he got some pace in that race he came widest he was on his left lead most of the way and he got up he's always been an honest horse i need to see him do it again yeah i mean we'll see what kind of price he is i mean listen maybe he's a big price once again so it doesn't matter um, that he paid over 80 dollars last time um, everything worked his way last time. Danny, as you said, he's always been a good horse. He's good on either surface. He's also always been reliant on pace and trip, and he got a big pace and a clean trip into it last time. New York bred cross border is your number four. He was third to Colonel Liam in the Pegasus World Cup last time out. I thought he ran well in that race. And I thought he ran just fine in the Diliberto. I thought that was a solid pace. He was close to it. He got to the outside, kind of a blanket finish. I was a little disappointed he didn't beat Logical Myth that day, but he ran well enough. He's a contender. He's definitely a contender, and he's also very tactical. Um, so, you know, even though you don't feel like he's going to go after factor this early in this race, he can get a position up close, and that could, you know, sort of lead to a really good trip for this horse. If he shows up and fires his best shot, he can win. Let's watch Colonel Liam, arguably the horse to boot, win the Pegasus World Cup turf. Uh, he's going to ease out to the outside here for clean running, and he's going to take a pretty good bump once he goes by this horse, which knocks him right onto his left lead. Undaunted, he keeps right on rolling by. Largent, who's a nice horse, and we're also going to see Cross Border get up for third, but Colonel Liam just seemed to be firing at the end of that race. You're right about all of his turf races being good, and he had, was very unlucky to lose the Saratoga. Derby. He looks like the horse to beat. I mean, three to one is a good price if you like him. I agree with that. We'll see if you can get three to one on him. Um, listen, I don't really have anything to add to it, Dan. He just looks really good and we'll see how, how far he can take it. Uh, we picked up that replay of the Pegasus World Cup turf last time after he had already come clear. Uh, but I mean, you go back and watch the replay. You just have to like the way that he gets a position. He was in a lot of traffic in that race all the way to the top of the stretch and he just held his ground until he got clear, and once he got clear, he ran. 
This looks like a big, strong horse for the Pletcher Barn. Logical Myth did some really nice things for Joe Sharp at the fairgrounds this winter. He swept through the Diliberto. Got a very nice trip, I thought, when he won the Bradley two starts back. But horses with his tactical speed often get good trips. In the fairgrounds, he fell a little bit far behind that fast pace. Maybe the yielding going worked against him as well, but he ran his usual honest effort. And he's going to be a good price, a consistent horse. Yeah, I think that's what you like about him is that uh, not only is he consistent, but he's very tactical. So you can do whatever you want with him. He usually stays closer to the pace, um, and that works out. I personally felt like when he won two and three starts back that he sort of took advantage. He had perfect trips um, and just sort of took advantage to win. But you know what? He almost took advantage again last time because the pace was there, so he just sat back and made a run. How about a sleeper at a price? The 7-2 Emmys really didn't show much early in his career, but this winter he has blossomed at the fairgrounds, and we'll go through his last trip. He was held up behind a slow pace, and he had nowhere to go in the stretch. Yeah, he got very unlucky last time. Um, listen, he is a horse who feels like he's really improving, and so you sort of um, understand why they're going to run him in this race. They want to find out how good he actually is, and he didn't really get to show it last time. Let's watch Spooky Channel's graded stakes victory in his seasonal debut at Sam Houston. This is the mile and a half grade three John B. Connolly. And Mike, he was favored in this race. He got a very nice prep at Gulfstream going a mile and an eighth. And while he only wins by a neck, he looked like a winner every step of the way. The question is, do you think he actually wants more distance than what he's going to get on Saturday? Yeah, I, I wasn't, I mean, that's po it's certainly possible. I wasn't as worried about the shorter distance as I was, just that he kind of has to prove, you know, that against horses like Factor This and probably Colonel Liam, that he's that he's this good. I'm not sure that he's proven that yet. When they find the right spots for him, um, he's actually, he always shows up and he gets it done as he did last time in the Connolly. You saw in that replay conviction trade, who's also back in here is the horse that he ran down on the lead. He was just too good for those horses. That's not the case here. It appears that Michael Maker, after claiming conviction trade for $50,000, has sort of transformed him into a speed horse. And the results have been there with a couple of stakes placings, including the Connolly, which we just saw. And he set a legitimate pace, I thought, in that longer distance Connolly. He has one from off the pace. And I wonder if he parks himself off Factor This and tries to get first run turning for home. May not be an easy trip because Factor This is no slouch. It's not like he's going to hand the lead over to conviction trade. Yeah, exactly. I don't know if that's a, a good position to be in or not, um, having to stalk him and then make the first run at him. You know, we'll just see if this horse can take what I think would need to be a gigantic step forward uh, to beat this race. I'm not that surprised that Maker stretched him out and that he's gotten good results out of his last two races, because when you watch Conviction Trade run, he's just, you know, sort of got that one gear. He grinds around the track. Um, I'm not sure the cutting back helps him. And, you know, certainly stepping up in class like this doesn't help him. 20 to 1 on the 10, Peace Achieved, who finished third in the fairground stakes at 34 to 1 in his last start. While he was relatively close to that solid pace, Mike, I thought he had a shot turning into the stretch, and he was kind of one paced late in a race that had somewhat of a blanket finish. It was by far the best race of his career. Maybe that wet track really moved him up a bit. It might have. Um, yeah, I sort of agree with you, Dan, in that even though he was closer to the pace than the 1 2 finishers, it still felt like he had a shot to win it. Um, on the other hand, listen, he's still very lightly raced. I feel like he's one of the few horses in here who could take another step forward in here. I feel like he's run pretty well in his first two starts this year. An underrated performer is the 11 Olympic runner. Look what he did in 2020. He chased Pink Lloyd, the king of the synthetic sprinters, in a couple of spots up at Woodbine. Then he ran a very good fourth in the grade one Woodbine mile after being wide turning into the stretch. He looked very good coming from left field to win an optional claim or two starts back. And he almost did it again in this race, the grade three Canadian turf. He's far behind turning into the stretch. He has a lot of work to do, but this horse will kick Mike. And I wonder if he does get some pace here. Uh, yeah, I agree. I, I like his last two races quite a bit. And you know, Dan, when you go back and watch this one, you know, you'll often hear people say that, you know, maybe this horse didn't see the horse, you know, that comes and gets him late. I, I don't always believe that. That might be the case in this race, though. This horse surged to the front very late. And that Venezuelan hug was pretty good, slipped through on the inside. This horse might not have seen it. Now, this is the first time he stretches out to a mile and an eighth. And a lot of folks will say, well, he's a closer at shorter distances. Of course, he'll do better at a mile and an eighth. And we know that's not the case always. How do you feel about this horse stretching out in distance? 
Uh, it's a very good point. I'm not sure that I feel like stretching out actually helps him. Um, but listen, if they if they sit back and he gets something to run at, I will expect him to make his presence felt in the stretch. Pixelate is going to be making his second start as a four-year-old, another horse that has shown some ability, a graded stakes winner. And he ran better than expected when fifth in the Pegasus World Cup. He was kind of close to that quick pace. He still was staying on a little bit. He has upside. He also has a very lousy post position and is facing a tough field. Eight to one to me, a little bit light. I would need more. Yeah, I look at him the same way. I do like this horse. So I do think he's a little bit underrated, Dan. Um, and I, he's one of the horses in this field who I think the you know the distance really works for him. I think longer is better for Pixelate. Let's take a look at our top pick for the grade two Muniz Memorial. We're going to chalk it out here. I just have been very impressed with what we've seen from Colonel Liam. And I think there's better even yet to come. Uh, you're going 5-1 in here. I'm going to go 5-4. Yeah, I, I'm going to take Colonel Liam, too. I do think this is a pretty good test for him, though. If Factor This gets a comfortable lead in this race, he is not going to be easy to run down. He is such a consistent, hard-hitting horse, especially when he gets loose on the lead. 5 one 11, four for Mike, 5 four 11, three for me in the Grade 2 Muniz Memorial Classic. Good luck.